Hi, welcome back to our Famous in America channel. In today's video, we're going to remember some irreplaceable talents in the entertainment world that have unfortunately left us recently. Today, a curious fact, we have some Brazilians on our list, but before starting this journey of great tributes, we would be deeply happy if you could leave your like and enjoy this video, because this small but super important gesture helps us a lot to continue sharing these simple tributes with all of you. Check out today's honorees. Number 1, Judith James. Film, TV, and Broadway producer Judith James died July 14, aged 86, from cancer in Santa Barbara, California. The news was revealed by his son, Jackson. Judith was Richard Dreyfus' faithful producing partner for many years and has worked on projects such as Quiz Show, Mr. Holland's Opus and Eleanor, in her own words. His collaboration with Dreyfus began with the 1987 star-studded documentary Funny, You Don't Look 200, a constitutional vaudeville, which James also co-wrote. Dreyfus and James executive produced the 1994 quiz show, which received four Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture and Best Director for actor Robert Redford. James was also a co-producer of Mr. Holland's Opus, the 1995 film that earned Dreyfus his second Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, having won for 1977's The Goodbye Girl. In addition, the duo also produced a telefilm, including Prisoner of Honor, 1991. Tireless and unstoppable, James was also the founder and leader of The James Gang, a political network that for over 20 years has hosted guests including former presidential candidates, mayors, lawmakers, authors and others. The meetings usually took place in the living room of their own home and their members were often involved in political activities and supporting candidates or pre-candidates. In 2005, as a member of Women in Film, James was instrumental in securing and building an alliance with General Motors, where he supported programs for women filmmakers. She also taught at UCLA and Santa Barbara City College and in her later years worked with screenwriters to help them shape and develop their source material. During the 1960s, she was married to personal manager, A&R Mann and music publicist Billy James, whose clients included Bob Dylan, Jackson Brown and The Doors. Later they got divorced. As you can see, art was in all areas of Judith's life. James is survived by his son and daughter-in-law, Caroline, a granddaughter, Josie, and a stepson, Mark. Number 2, Jerry Bradley. Incomparable music industry executive Jerry Bradley, best known for his role in American country music, passed away today, July 17, 2023, aged 83, according to a statement issued by his family. As head of RCA Records in Nashville from 1973 to 1982, Bradley was fully involved in the marketing and creation of country music's first platinum album, Wanted. The Outlaws, which reached that milestone in 1976. Bradley's most significant value to Nashville was as a record executive, who best understood the perfect way to blend Music City's commercial goals with the mainstream's ever-increasing tastes for diverse country sounds. Keeping with family tradition, in 2019, Bradley was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, the same year as Brooks and Dunn and Stevens. This made Bradley the third member of his family to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, after his father Owen, 1974, and Uncle Harold, 2006. Jerry Bradley is survived by many, including his son, Clay, who, alongside a career as an ANR artist manager, CEO, creative director and also music editor, is currently the Nashville Vice President Creative for Broadcast Music Incorporated. Thus following the same path as their ancestors. All success to Clay. Number 3, Elise Finch. CBS New York is mourning the loss of its meteorologist Elise Finch, who died suddenly at the age of 51 this weekend, the station announced Sunday. The cause of his death has yet to be determined but Finch is known to have died in a hospital, according to a statement from WCBS. Finch joined WCBS-TV in 2007 as the station's weekend weatherman and quickly became part of the week's morning news team, along with co-hosts Mary Calvi and Chris Ragg. Last September, she joined Cindy Sue on the 9 a.m. news. 
Finch was on air at the station last Friday, July 14, exactly two days before the station announced her death. A sad loss not only for the broadcaster but for all of us viewers. Number 4, Julius Juice Crossland. Julius Crossland, former standout at Amarillo Palo Duro High School in Amarillo, passed away on July 15, 2023, at age 39. The actual cause of his death has not been released, although there are indications that it may have been a heart attack. However, these speculations have not been confirmed so far. Crossland, who was affectionately nicknamed Juice, had a notable football career playing for Oklahoma State University OSU, from 2003 to 2007. He made significant contributions as a key blocker and rusher for the Cowboys, appearing in 46 games in his career and becoming one of OSU's most reliable goal line options, scoring a total of 23 touchdowns. Over his college career, Crossland recorded 432 rushing yards and played a vital role in helping the Cowboys secure four bowl game berths, the 2004 Alamo Bowl, 2004 Cotton Bowl, 2006 Independence Bowl and Insight Bowl. From 2007. Crossland under head coach Les Miles started out in the OSU football program and quickly became the essential offensive cornerstone during the early years of head coach Mike Gundy's tenure. After graduating from OSU with a degree in education, Crossland signed with the Dallas Cowboys as an undrafted free agent. Although he appeared in several preseason games, his involvement with the first team was only as a member of the practice squad. The passing of Julius Crossland is a great loss and will be forever felt by the football community, particularly those who witnessed his impressive performances on the pitch. He will be remembered for his tireless dedication to the sport and the impact he made during his time at Amarillo Palo Duro High School and Oklahoma State University. Number 5, Joao Donato. The Brazilian multi-instrumentalist Joao Donato de Oliveira Neto or Joao Donato as he became known in the artistic world, died at the age of 88 in the early hours of this Monday, July 17, 2023, in the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, as a result of a series of health problems. He recently had an infection in his lungs and was hospitalized with pneumonia. Donato had been intubated since the week before last. In addition to piano and accordion, his declared passions, Donato was also an arranger, singer and composer. Joao Donato had a 74-year career that was marked by creativity and the mixture of various musical genres. He did not stop working even during the COVID-19 pandemic, when he participated in the digital release of the album, Jazz is Dead, in partnership with musicians from Los Angeles. A curiosity. In 1959 Donato moved here to the United States, where he lived for three years. During this period, he performed with Carl Jader, Johnny Martinez, Tito Puente and Mongo Santa Maria. Donato also toured Europe with the famous Brazilian singer Joao Gilberto. In 1962, he returned to Brazil, married the American actress Patricia del Sasser. But in 1963, he was back in the United States where he lived for another 10 years. Throughout his career Donato had many partnerships with famous artists, such as Ostrud Gilberto, Dori Val Kami, Tom Jobim, Ymir Deodato, Stan Kenton, Nelson Riddle, Herbie Mann and Wes Montgomery. Little known in the United States but highly regarded in Brazil, Donato will be buried this Tuesday, 18, at the Teatro Municipal in Rio de Janeiro and will be cremated afterwards. Number 6, Palhinha. Brazilian footballer Vanderlei Eustaquio de Oliveira, better known as Palhinha, died today, July 17, 2023, aged 73 in a hospital in Minas Gerais, Brazil, where he was hospitalized due to an infection. The actual cause of death has yet to be revealed. Palhinha played as a striker for several Brazilian clubs, including Cruzeiro and Corinthians and also played for the Brazilian national football team. After his retirement as a player, he dedicated himself to a career as a coach and also as a businessman. Palhinha also acted as a sports commentator for a brief period of time on Brazilian TV. Our video ends here guys, and if you got here and liked the content, 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to receive the next content. Thank you very much and a blessed week to all.